Yesterday was New Year's Day, the 1st of January. I woke up quite early and I went up the law. I live quite close by. And I was really interested to find that there were about 20 other people and they were sitting and standing and waiting. And what we were waiting for was for the sun to go up. There was just such a sense of looking forward to the future. 2020 has been such a, a, a difficult and challenging year but we were longing for something new, for a fresh start. And I wanted to just look at a few verses from Isaiah 43 today. God is talking to his people through Isaiah the prophet. The situation is that um, they are in exile in Babylon and they are um, very aware of the way in which God has worked in the past. Remember, they've been slaves in Egypt and God brought them out in a miraculous way, parted the Red Sea, took them through the, the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. And they tended to kind of think that that was God's pièce de résistance. He did this wonderful thing in the past, uh, but here they were now in exile and actually they felt a bit stuck, you know, what was God, God going to do? And God says here, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honour me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland and give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I form for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. So God is saying, I am going to do something new and different and actually it will probably supersede what your memories are of the past. And I'm wondering how good we are at moving on from the past. This, this little passage talks about forgetting the former things, not dwelling on the past. Sometimes it's good to look to the past. We, we learn from the past. It's good to remember and be thankful for good things in the past. But we can dwell on the past in a way that is not helpful. Actually, it can keep us moving into the new things that God wants to do. And I was just thinking about some of the reasons why we might dwell in an unhelpful way in the past. Maybe we can regret things that we didn't do or things that happened and there's this kind of you know continually moving back and thinking oh I wish that or maybe there's a, a guilt maybe there's something that has happened in the past that we still feel bad about we have been unable to move on we're carrying that burden of guilt or maybe it's nostalgia it's like oh you know what things were so good in the past they just, you know, it's never going to be the same. Oh, I wish we could go back. I wish things could be different. I wish we could. So there's that nostalgia. Or oh, there's maybe a real bitterness. Maybe there's been something that has really been difficult. Someone who has wronged us. And there's a, a real sense that we have not moved on from that event. There's a bitterness and a lack of forgiveness. But you know, God is saying, do not dwell in the past. Let him move us on to this new thing. Uh, actually, if we look back to scripture, we see what happened to Lot's wife, don't we? When she was dwelling on the past, God wanted to save them, take them out of Sodom uh, and, and Gomorrah. But she got kind of nostalgic. Oh, I'm not sure I want to go God's way. She turned back. And she really got stuck, didn't she? She was turned into a pillar of salt. But God is inviting us into a new thing, not to dwell on the past. And the great thing is that we can trust God as we move into this new thing, because he tells us very clearly, I am making a way in the desert. Now, perhaps as we look into 2021, it feels like, very unfamiliar, unattractive, barren, desert-like terrain. I mean, the things that are familiar, the things that maybe give us joy, the activities, the interactions with people, we're unable to do in the same thing. And it just feels dry and arid. But God is saying, no, I will make a way 
in that desert. I will lead you through. Trust me. I will lead you through. And there's so many promises in the Bible about God's guidance, his taking us where he needs us to be as we put our hand in his. I love that verse in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't rely on what you think you know. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So God will make a way in the desert. But also he promises that I will provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland. He's not going to kind of lead his people into the desert without um, meeting their needs. God knows what we will need. He knows our frame. He knows that we're dust. He knows that we're going to need encouragement. He knows that we're going to need hope. We, he knows that we will need interactions with people which will bring life and joy. And as we think of, of our church of St James, he knows how important it is for us in some way to be able to come together um, and worship together. Maybe even just that sense of being together through the Keep Connected letter. God knows our needs and he says he will provide that refreshing. He will provide streams in the desert. We may not see them, we may not be aware of how they're going to come, but we can trust God for them. And as I say this, I am talking really very much to myself about going into this new thing. I am somebody who finds new things, and some people love them, you know, they're all up for the next thing, but I'm somebody who finds new things a little bit scary. I am on my third Ford Fusion because I like cars that are familiar. I don't want a new phone because I like something that's familiar. When I go walking with my sister and she suggests a, a new route, oh, maybe we could go along there. I don't like that. I like familiar tracks. But this is an opportunity to trust God for this new thing. He will lead us. He will guide us. He will take us through this very disorientating, unfamiliar territory. And he will give us what we need. He will refresh. He will give that water. And you know, the reason for this, God says at the end of this little section, is that uh, these people are formed, formed for himself, that they may proclaim his praise. And that's a, a really interesting thought, that God allows circumstances in our lives through which we can be formed. And you know, God's greatest goal for us is that we become more like Jesus, that we react in circumstances, we react to challenges in a way that, that Jesus would. And that is a huge thing, isn't it? With grace, with patience, with trust, in God and we can be formed um, in ways that will bring honour and credit to God as we allow him to guide us and empower us and change us through his Holy Spirit. Let's pray. God we thank you that you are not a God who allows us to stagnate to stand still, to rest on our laurels in a way that is unhelpful. You are constantly and continually doing a new thing. And we do not want to dwell on the past in ways that will keep us held back and keep us from moving into the new things that you want to bring us into, lead us into in this coming year. Lord, I pray that you would help us to let go of regrets, that you would help us to forgive where we need to, that you would keep us from unhelpful nostalgia. And Lord, we embrace this new year because we move into it with you. And we thank you that you make a way in the desert. 
And we thank you that you will provide refreshing, that you'll provide for all our needs. And Lord, yes, we want to be formed. We want more to be people who are like Jesus, people who will bring you honour and bring you credit. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And very best wishes for 2021.